time for some history, Doug. Let's go straight in. Ooh, no fucking around. So you need a little stretch. Up. You can stretch it. This is our second time going in with this intro this week, no, guys. No, it's not like natural. Nah. So it's our first little bust at this no. ever. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an honest guy. I don't like to do that. Um, and I'll try to be honest because I'll probably make so many mistakes doing this fucking podcast. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I'll probably get so many dates wrong and everything. We could have blamed the lizard people this whole time. I think that's their fault of everything. So, yeah, it's definitely. <laughs> any them. T- any t- we're not blaming blaming, blaming ChatGPT. Mm. Giving me a bad date timeline sometimes. <laughs> they're not blaming uh, Wikipedia for maybe being incorrect sometimes for me stealing information off that. We're not blaming anyone's perspective on a documentary they make for me stealing their perspective for yeah. the sake of the episode. That's it. You know no, what I mean? None of that. None of that. It's obviously not. Because <laughs> the lizard people got there first. <laughs> obviously. So even if it was Wikipedia, it's because the lizard man did it. <laughs> he edited it because he didn't see me Google it last week and then forget all about it for another week. <laughs> and then get the year wrong when I do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Browsing History. We got, I'm back again, boys. Sam's here, Yarn's here. And we got Ross back from all the stuff and some of the things podcast. Regular guest now. Not even a guest, bro. Yeah. He's oh, the furniture. furniture. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're finishing each other's sentences. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> uh, this week's episode, I think it's going to be a two-parter. I might even split it into a two-parter no matter how long it takes because I don't think we've got anything chosen for next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing that we do. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and also in two weeks' time is the subject of this week's episode anyway. So we might as well hype up the yeah. movie coming out about this geezer. Yeah, this two is weeks a sponsored leading. pod, guys. Yes. <laughs> we did a sponsored pod for Killers of the Flower Moon, didn't we? Yeah. Now we're doing That's a... true, yeah. Yeah. And now we're doing a sponsored pod, which we're not getting paid for, for uh, Ridley Scott's Napoleon. That's it. And we even made a free commentary for 300. <laughs> we did. And I did one for Braveheart with my Scottish mate. We're interns. <laughs> we're serving an internship. <laughs> <laughs> Any of you big employers out there, let us know. <laughs> so, yeah, we're doing... Uh, the coup, uh, we're doing the coup of 18 Brumaire also happened this week in history. Yeah. So we managed to get a bit of Napoleon with that. Yesterday, from the day of recording, so we're, um, on the 9th of November, is uh, Napoleon Bonaparte's coup d'etat of 18 Brumaire, when, where he uh, t- first took power as the first consular and turned up and just ripped the government away from the French fucking revolution. Do you know what year it was? Uh, the year was <laughs> 1799. <laughs> no, um, it was eight. <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> I yeah. I think it was the year eight. Yeah, yeah. The French the... had like a short-lived calendar they tried to get going. That's right. When they had the French Revolution, they were <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah, we got our own calendar. The revolutionary calendar. Let's start again at one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> that. Wild cunts. Oh, they reckon they could do that. Like the rest of the world is going to be like, yeah, all right. Yeah. Let's go with that calendar. <laughs> Look, none of us are eating snails either, you cunts. So <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going to go with your calendar, are we? We took on meters, though. Yeah, we did. Look, I think it might have been Napoleon that actually put it all together. Look, as an Englishman, we're not me- really meant to like Napoleon, are, they? are we? Oh, he's a little guy. He's a little buddy now. I've seen his <laughs> Ridley Scott fucking no. trailer, and I'm, I'm kind of down. Well, now I've been learning about him, I'm actually like, yeah, no, this geezer's all right. Yeah. He's a full Drake song, bro. And he I started heard... from the bottom, now he's here. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought it was much earlier than... Uh, 1800 sort of thing did like you it's like the end of the 17 start of the 18 well, it's quite close I yeah. always like, imagined him as like a mytho- mythological figure yeah like an Alexander the Great or yeah. Caesar yeah there's a reason you think of him like that because <laughs> he, he made you think of him <laughs> like <laughs> that yeah exactly bro he was that good <laughs> he was that good man I'm going to start putting my hand in my pocket in pictures and everything <laughs> yeah you know what I mean Sonic <laughs> he was actually the dog man like so another thing with him as well is he was called like the man who brought us to the modern modern century like the modern man yeah do you know the like metric the mon- man <laughs> the metric man <laughs> so like the modern era yeah like he was the last great war general well he moved on military um quite a bit didn't he like, what do you mean um tactics and things like that oh he's like the boss of that yeah. he's everyone every, generals like, nowadays consider him the greatest yeah his everyone's, artillery positions and stuff yeah like that. yeah he was the absolute inspired donny of it bro his thing was he was good at marching yeah, and I know that sounds fucking weird, but he was good at like positioning troops on the battlefield, yeah. 
before the battlefield and he'd, he'd keep th- hundreds and thousands of maps with him mm. and map geezer a whole cart was full of maps I heard a lot that he was like that's why it's called make- cartography <laughs> <laughs> go on he was making um, like units move in like more strategic ways than what they used to do yes. in the old days and he was managing to get the army so well trained that they could hold off uh, like a big attack from another army like oh, a yeah. precise army while the others then caught up yeah 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 all- Sort of set down his battle lines all the way through. Yeah, he was so fucking he was... excellent at that. He he was really good. His favorite thing was just to sort of like envelop, almost just flank, but whoop, and yeah. envelop the other army. And the that. old pincer move. Yeah, yeah, he loved the pincer move, Rob. And he was also a sneaky boy on the battlefield. He's very sneaky. We'll get into some of them. But he's because he's... he's little. <laughs> <laughs> That's a myth too, Rob. He weren't even that little. But his mates were big, so same thing. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was taller than Horatio Nelson. So Nelson's like our big boy who fucked him over a bunch of times. That's why we had to put him on top of the column. That's why we had to put him on top <laughs> of the column. That's it. That's it. Make him feel better. Can't see a size six pony. shoes from down here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was. He was. Uh, Napoleon was taller than him. And also, I really not that I'm angry about it or anything, but I really dislike the Napoleon being short um, meme because I'm the exact same height. I'm five five six. So. Was Napoleon five six? Yeah, Napoleon was That's five short, six. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, man. I don't have a, I don't want to have a complex over it or anything. But Napoleon was a fucking short, all right. <laughs> you should get a little bit of the Napoleons going on, bro. If I sort your shit out. <laughs> and he's one of the great moves. But yeah, he uh, he's a pretty fucking epic dude. So we'll talk about him, brother. But let's before we get into that. Let's do our usual stuff. What birthdays you got for 9th of November? Oh, that's some goodness. Is that? Um, oh, I've got some things that happened on 9th of November as well. Go on. Uh, do the birthdays first. Yeah. Because they're inconsequential. So you know the, I mean? the earliest one I got was George II. Oh, what, of England? Yeah. The old king. Yeah, boy. Shit. And Edward the Seventh, same birthday. No way. And another pair, um, Lou Ferrigno is in the Hulk. Yeah. He's in Pumping movie. Iron. And Ed Corney. Yeah, the yeah, bodybuilder. yeah. Bodybuilder, he's in pumping iron. Oh, fucking hell. He's a guy that faints when he fucking squats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a sick posing routine. But oh, yeah, they're born on the same day. Nice. Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan? He was cool, but his apprentice is a fucking blowhole, bro. <laughs> I hate listening to fucking Neil deGrasse. So Carl Sagan's pretty cool. Space guy. Uh, but space is a lie, so also fuck Carl Sagan. Yeah, space doesn't exist. Yeah. But, um. <laughs> 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 the, so I thought it was quite British. Charles Gilbert Scott. Who's so he's an architect and a designer. Yeah. He's done quite a lot, but he's famous for the red telephone box. Oh, is it? That's oh, no iconic, isn't it? Yeah, that is That's iconic. what you want a picture of. Oh, mate. When you come to England. Up. Yeah. And also, absolute smoke show. Go on. And possibly, like, one of the greatest geniuses of our time. Go on. Hedy Lamar. Go on. She was, like, a black and white actress. Okay. I think there were a couple of coloured films. Yeah, yeah. But it was, like, early days of, like, cinema. Nice. And she's responsible for the alternating frequencies. No. So that's how we do Wi-Fi and shit now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she thought about it as like a way to stop your signal getting intercepted by oh, the enemy. Fuck. But that did get used in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Did it? Yeah. The same shit she thought. Yeah. So she made it up, on, but it girl. didn't happen for ages. Didn't use. It. She was like pre World War Two. Oh really? It's so hot. Oh, is she? Oh, uh, mate. <laughs> so like Probably she's a top smoke five show of all and, like, time. Scientists and made yeah. Wi-Fi. And a super genius. And no one took her serious because of how hot she was. God damn. So she'd come in the room like, I've got fucking Wi-Fi, boys. All we need is like diamonds and copper and we'll yeah, put this router yeah. together. And they're like, whoo-wee, baby. <laughs> we'll be in a film. <laughs> God damn, poor chick. I mean, it can't have been that hard, bro. But still. Talking about poor chick. Go on. Jill Dando. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. No. Happy birthday, Jill. Is Rest it in her peace. birthday? Fuck yeah. no, Netflix have made a documentary about Jill Dando. Yeah, have you watched it yet? No, I'm not going to watch it because no. I don't want Netflix telling me about shit. Whatever. Yeah. I don't believe it's shit in what yeah. they say. But Unless at least it's John Gotti the mob, then I'll watch that, guys. <laughs> Keep that going. Like, because she was a pedo hunter for real. Yeah, she was a pedo so hunter. So I took her out. Yeah, we all she know. She was that. about to expose her. Jimmy was like the most tame yeah. of the conservatives of the 80s. Yeah. And she was about to spill all the beans. They gunned her down on their doorstep. <clears throat> and unless Netflix are coming out saying that, yeah. but no, they're going to say that we're I won't crazy. even check until I know for sure that they're saying that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not watching it because it'll sway me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look, it's made by some people who will probably laugh at me for talking about worrying when The Rock posts talking about the pizza and shit. Yeah, but Rock does a lot of pizza shit, bro. He Him and Oprah are tight. Yeah, he was in on Hawaii and stuff as well, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. 
I think he's trafficking children from Haiti. I'll go out and uh, say that. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell him I said it. <laughs> Imagine how fucked his knees are. I reckon I could drop him. <laughs> I doubt it. I, for some reason, I just doubt it. Bro. Double footer, like fucking Dudley Boy style, to one of his knees. He's gone. He's all top heavy. <laughs> He must be 60 by now. <laughs> <laughs> that don't matter. He's on the good good, isn't he? Yeah, true. He's on the actual single source stem cell. <laughs> he's got a Haitian woman in his basement. He's just like producing Absorbing. embryos that he's yeah. feeding off. Like Hillary Clinton comes around, shows him how to do it. <laughs> Why isn't Hillary Clinton hench? She's eating all these babies like the rock. I Maybe he's just got that baby in genetics. It's, it's different ba- they're eating different types of babies. Yeah, different diets. Yeah, of <laughs> yeah true. <laughs> She's mount. racist, but he'll take a Haitian. <laughs> and then that shrimp. <laughs> what else has happened on this day? Give me some events for that have happened on the 9th of November. Oh, I've still got Cisco. Oh, still birthday. Cisco's, Cisco's birthday, birthday and French Montana's birthday. God damn. Some and Chris song. Jericho. Chris God damn. The walls Anyone of Jericho. Anyone with an older sibling knows about the rules of Jericho, bro. Yeah, bro. Well, the walls of Jericho, isn't it? Yeah. I always called it the rules. <laughs> no, it's the walls, walls isn't it? Yeah. But I think it's where we live. <laughs> what do you rules, mean? rules, <laughs> <laughs> rules of Jericho. <laughs> uh, we got the Great Boston Fire, 9th of November. Oh shit! And it's a big day for Berlin. What do you mean? Like uh, Germany's, I think it's Germany's Independence Day or something like that. Nice. But it's also the fall of the Berlin Wall. Nice. And the Beer Hall Push. Oh shit! And Crystal Next. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> yeah, it's a big day. They did a lot on that day. Yeah. Shit, in excellent. First of all, the Nazis tried to take over. Then a few years later, they have taken over, and this is the night they fuck with all the Jews. Yeah, so it's basically their January 6th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then in the 80s, even more decades later, they smashed down the Berlin Wall. Yeah, 89. Goodbye, Wall. Fuck it, no. That is a big day for them. Mr. Gorbachev, tear that wall down. Oh, I don't know. But you've got to keep an eye on them every November 9th now, haven't you? Yeah. you just yeah, got to yeah. look, look over there like, hold up, lads. I wonder what happened this year. Yeah, I wonder what did happen this year. But they're always up to something on November 9th. Just yeah, it's like Germany Day. Just year. always watch Germany. It's Dematria. Yeah, you've got to keep an eye on that shit. Um, talking of January 6th, go on. Uh, presidential t- transition of Trump's begins. <laughs> presidential <laughs> transition of <laughs> missiles. <laughs> what, on the November 9th, 2016? November 9th, yeah, so he won the election on the 8th and the 9th is yeah. when he was in Obama's house and Obama's looking at him like, come on, <laughs> he's going to fuck women in here. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> Nobody grossed out. <laughs> Where's Fake Man, I still can't believe that the whole whole reason he became president is because Obama talked trash on him that time. Yeah. It's amazing, yeah. isn't Just it? The shit talked to him as well, I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna lay in your bed. <laughs> you seen that? It's fucking great. It's just amazing. Like <laughs> Because you'll never be president like me, Donald. <laughs> and he's like, fucking what? Challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah, watch this shit, boy. Hold my beer, bitches. <laughs> Talking of, go on. 1796, of George November. Washington gives his farewell address. So it's basically that time of year, isn't it? The election yeah, it season. Is. Yeah, so, so next here's year. one lined up with yeah. um, George Washington stepping down. Oh, shit. What, a bomb? Oh, no, sorry. Down. This is the year, not the day. Oh. I'm a fool. You are a fool. But it must have been like January time then. But around like winter time, but uh, George Washington gives his farewell address, saying that, like warning people against partisan politics, oh. foreign entanglements. Oh, and um, but he set a precedent because he could have run for a third term. He but he was have. like, I'll only do two. They wanted him <coughs> to. They wanted him to stay on. Yeah, and he was like, No, I'm not staying on. Yeah, it's boring. Get anyone. Were and, they the, um, were they the rules that they what? can't do two terms from the very beginning? So I think they weren't the rules from the very beginning because th- they were asking him to be king and shit. Right. And he was like, no, we fucking, we did all this. Yeah, we just fought, yeah. fought against <laughs> all this shit. We just fucking had all this. And it don't work. Don't work. Like, we've got to do something new. Yeah. So he stepped down. One of the things, <laughs> it's quite funny. So one of the things, he thought it was a big deal that he wore glasses. He was all embarrassed about it. Yeah, he was all embarrassed about him wearing glasses because he thought. It, and now yeah. look at Biden. <laughs> That's embarrassing because he thought it made him look old. Mm. So um, his big like moment of him trying to drop the mic and be like, "Look, I need to quit being in Congress and shit or whatever." He put his glasses on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, "What are you going to read?" And he's Some, like, "Look how old I am." <laughs> someone, someone said something to him in the, in the halls, and he was like, "I'm sorry, who said that? I'm afraid I can't." see and put on his glasses 
and he was expecting everyone to be like, <gasps> but they're all just like, eh, 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 <laughs> I said cool it, I want to be it, king. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Georgia, it is election season in America, around about this time, yeah. But yeah, that was 96, same year as the coup, innit? Oh, was it in 96, same year as the coup? Yeah. and uh, So as George Washington steps down, Napoleon goes, f- fucking takes control. Yeah. That's pretty cool. But no, this this happened in 99, sorry. 99? Yeah, not 1799, not 1796. Why have I got 96? <laughs> I don't know. It's around about that time. It's, it's a good time of year anyway for yeah. America. The Jay Treaty, Jay's Treaty. Okay. It's like a trade treaty with Britain and okay. it sort of divided the country. Nice. That's another good time. That's a good time. Uh, sm- smallpox vaccine. Edward Jenner. Get one? Yeah, seventeen ninety six. Nice. Double vaccine for the first time. Nice. Uh, Jane Austen's just started Pride and Prejudice. She just started writing. Just it? started writing it. Good Don't get released till like fucking eighteen twenty or something though. Really? Yeah. And here's a good one. All historians should know and history enthusiasts. Go on. Catherine the Great dies. Oh really? Of Russia. So everyone says she died fucking a horse. But oh, really? she's kind of like a victim of the propaganda, like Napoleon Shaw. Yeah, 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 maybe. Or maybe she did fuck a horse. Yeah, she was like, she, well, they tr- like hated her anyway for being single, so like she must okay. just be a slut. Oh. So, but she loved horses. She's crazy about horses. Oh shit! Yeah. Made up, so oh, she man, was the OG a... horse girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got crushed under a horse, but other pe- but people like, no, she didn't. That's embarrassing. Don't you dare. She died falling off the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> she got. She was like old and ill, <laughs> shit and fell off the toilet. <laughs> but yeah, so even if people are like, that's not true, she wasn't fucking a horse. Yeah, yeah. Well, then she was shitting up herself. <laughs> that is like <laughs> such a like classical school school comeback insult. Like, oh, you like horses? You you must fuck horses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you seen her at the stables? What's a single lady doing around them big dick horses? <laughs> What a rumour to start back then. Can you imagine being the chap who started that rumour and getting it in the history books as oh, well? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, imagine mm. all them urban legends and that. Yeah, yeah. Who like, started them? Yeah. He must be like, yes! <laughs> like, Goes who, to like fucking 10 towns over and people are like, oh, we heard. Mad props so, to the I geese. I made that up! Mad props to the geese who made up like Marilyn Manson getting rid of ribs to suck his own dick. Yeah. The dude who made that, mad props. Well but done. also, that's like a phenomena. Yeah, they yeah, said that few... about dudes in the 80s. Yeah, they someone did. someone said that about a dude in the 70s. Like, yeah, it, was, yeah, yeah. it was just continuous. It's true. I want to know the first rock star who that rumour was about and who started that rumour. Mm. Good on you. You're probably dead, but good on you. <laughs> Might have been old cunt like, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and old cunt who's well into history now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This to our podcast like, yes, lads. Finally, the appreciation I've always sought. <laughs> yeah, like a fucking it's all cut out of magazines and that it was me <laughs> <laughs> what else happened on November 9th oh no what else happened in the world 19... the 1790s sorry late 1790s yeah Old Lang Syne by Robert Burns is published yeah the New Year's song yeah nice and Robert we Burns all, famous we Scot- shake hands yeah. yeah he's a Scottish fella yeah Ross loves a bit of Scotland he is Scottish aren't you half yeah half. yeah there you go yeah. only, only my only good way. half only wear kilts half the week. He's about as <laughs> Scottish as you oh, are. I keep saying work kilt, kilts. Yeah. Yeah, like like, like with yeah, pouches and that. Yeah. Dewalt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rizzler as well. Talking of geezer shit. Yeah. Rizzler was made, bro. No. I don't know if they're as thin as they are now back then. What are they? Uh, 1796. Because that's the year on the packet, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it says it tells you it's right in your face the whole time. <laughs> when was Stella again? I don't know. That's on Cronenberg the can, is it? 1776, isn't it? Cronenberg is 1776, yeah. That's a good padlock combination. That is. If you're going to try. But not in America, because it's the year of the revolution. The Revolutionary beer. No, it's their independence, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's not the year of the revolution. It's when they get their fucking document. So there's another one. I can't remember if this is the one. But it, this definitely happened, but I've got a little story go on. to go along with something like this. Go on. So the Battle of Fishguard. Not Fishguards in West Wales. Okay. Uh, that, this is... 1797 yeah so um there's an irish american and he's in league with the um irish boys like they've got an irish independence party sort of thing going on yeah and a couple french guys he's got some french support yeah yeah they, they, he, it's the last th- invasion of britain oh they land it? on wales and like really get poggered to be fair i think it turned up to like nearly three thousand dudes so I, I came across a little bit of this when i was doing research i didn't go into it too much because fucking napoleon weren't about he weren't there 
like he weren't present do you know what i mean so mm. i was like oh, i'll ignore that but yeah the french during the french pretty much started i mean they didn't start the troubles england started the fucking troubles but the french like, backed it the french backed it and, and there's really, irish portuguese wars as yeah, well yeah they like really encouraged like the push of the irish fighting mm. against the english and coming up against them which makes sense yeah i mean so they're kind of like fucking talibans <laughs> I guess they, 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 they just push out the Russian sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! What have we done? Yeah, but how many terrorists globally are used exactly for that? Funded by someone else to fucking. Yeah, so sorry, it was thirteen hundred, not three thousand, but there was only about six hundred defenders. That's fucking wild. But there's a story. Have you seen Welsh national dress? No. The ladies wear a black bonnet and a red like petticoat over a like okay dress. Yeah, and sounds um, cute as hell. Yeah, it's cool as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Little black bonnet. There but from the shore, when they're pulling up, yeah. they nearly went to this other Welsh village, but yeah. all the women were traditional there. Oh, shit. So they saw it and thought, that's fucking British soldiers. They oh. know we're coming, because they thought oh, it was like the, the bear skin and, the, and yes. the, the red coat. Yes. <laughs> so they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and they went one village down or whatever. Oh, fuck. Oh, I found the sluts down the, in the village down the road uh, were traditional, like the fucking <laughs> yeah. good women up the road. They were never have traditional, bro. That's it. It always helps. Oh, just traditional wifey, and that's it, bro. You gotta dress up your wife as English soldiers from here on out, guys. <laughs> yeah, so it's like scramble together defense, like six hundred militia. You gotta be buying uh, that My Chemical Romance jacket, <laughs> red, <laughs> yeah. not black. You know what I, mean? I always thought of it as a Libertines jacket. Yeah, just well, so people yeah, didn't know I knew what ones. My Chemical Romance was. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Libertines first, wasn't it? Yeah, but let's be real on on the cultural aspect. Fucking emos took it. Yeah, took yeah. it from the indie, indie kids, and they claimed it, painted it black. Yeah, of course they. <laughs> what other colour? <laughs> they've got three belts on <laughs> yeah so it's actually a cuntish time of year actually it's 97 and 99 so 97 yeah. the Bank Restrictions Act Ooh. so it, um, it meant they didn't have to swap notes for gold uh, yeah so like, you d- like they just start that's where inflation and all that started oh, cheeky cunts and income tax in 99 where for England? Yeah, so it's, it was to fund the effort during the French Revolutionary War. Yeah, it was to fund fighting the yeah, French. So it's yeah. like, well, they're weak. Let's like, we were still paying. Give us some credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we're, we're still war. paying. Yeah, the French, France fight the French. <laughs> France have been fine for a while. Napoleon's ain't ain't there no more. Do you know? They what should mean? save it all up. The income tax goes into one account, and every time France has a riot, we go over there <laughs> and just fucking plunder. <laughs> it pays for all our ferry. <laughs> <laughs> <We just> go, <laughs> fucking stop it. <laughs> Turn up and get some dysentery. But here's the thing, right? That's one of the things I actually like the French for is how good, good they are and how up for they yeah, are like having a riot politically, and they like trying to fix fix their shit and get their shit together. And that's one of the things where, like, I think I've said before, like, obviously as an Englishman, we're not meant to like Napoleon, mm. but you end up liking him because even though he's fighting the English, you realise he's actually just a geezer fighting the English crown. Yeah, and then you go, fucking yes. Yeah. Like, I'm just a geezer fighting the English crown. <laughs> <laughs> so so much in common. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? George Washington is why I like big G- G- GW. Yeah. Except he wasn't a little man like Napoleon. He was a giant six foot brother with wooden donkey teeth. Yeah. <laughs> and he was just in another place fighting the English crown. On rowing boats, bro. Rowing he boats. was an insane cunt. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just these geezers in history just going, fuck off to the English crown got mad respect for him and he did it to the all of europe bro it took all of europe getting a few armies together and turning to him and being like fucking quit it and him just going no <laughs> <laughs> turn up with fuck loads of chavies organize the shit out of them so they walk like fucking bosses trap you on some yeah. ice and be like no do you reckon that's why marching so important then because it's kind of this era isn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. this sort of era everyone was all it's about all pomp and yeah, yeah. so he invented proper marching so you could do it on the battlefield I don't know if he invented like, like synchronized. style and like synchronising and all that looking good but what I mean is is he was just good at strategizing oh, right. the boys them and placing journey. them on the and in the walk and where to get there and how to get there do you mm. know what I mean he was the fucking Donny at that so 98 Go on. getting closer um Lyrical Ballads is published anonymously, but it's Samuel Taylor Coleridge and Wordsworth. So they begin the romantic era of poetry, basically, Ooh, with that. Lovely. I know Lord Byron's knocking about during Napoleon's life. Which one? They're all oh, Lord Byron's. They're all shit. sexy, proper Lord Byron's. With the boxing one. 
Yeah, he's all, well all right. There's bro. like three boxer ones, about oh, 12 that? poetry ones, <laughs> three painting ones. No, no, there was, there was one who was poetry and boxing. Yeah, no, the, he yeah, was the, the actual Byron is yeah. around now, yeah. yeah. The one we all think of, the handsome one that like, women got so wet they slid off their seat or something. He's <laughs> actually the Donny, bro. I never even realised until I found out he was a fucking fisticuffs geezer. Talking of Donnies, go on. Ranjit Singh, big fucking uncle, captures Lahore in oh, 1799. Yeah. So that's a key step in establishing the Sikh Empire. Oh, really? So they got Lahore, the city, and then he becomes the Maharaj of Punjab later. They s- snatch Maharaj it off the British. Maharaj Ji. They snatch it off the British. Uh, no, I think it was. Um, it's like Pakistan sort of territory. Oh, okay. I was hoping they snatch it off. Those dudes. Dudes. Yeah, good what are they lads. called? Thuggy. Yeah, all that sort of shit. Banditos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah bro. that's gangster. That is. So is, is that that that's leading up to the world? That's what's going on in the world when Napoleon takes takes control of the French government. Yeah, so what do they call him? First secretary, basically, isn't first it? First cons- consul. Yeah, first consul. So let's get a bit more into Napoleon and his life, lads. I have a couple of things, I little notes I wrote before. They're all uh, little because they're Napoleon notes. But <laughs> <laughs> he's only five foot six, damn it. <laughs> Same height, fuck's sake. <laughs> no, I swear he's taller than five six, otherwise I would never believe that he wasn't small. <laughs> so, uh, he had more than 80 battles in his life. That's pretty good going. And only lost 11. Nice. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. And like, do you know, I said, uh, so he's, he's obviously good at retreating as well. Which, by the oh, way, yeah. I mentioned classic. I mentioned George Washington earlier. Yeah. Yeah. That was what made him a good general, apparently. Knew when to retreat. He was good at retreating. Yeah. you got to know when to hold him <laughs> and know when to fold him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Napoleon obviously knew how to retreat as well. So, it, did he win six out of... Uh, 80 bat- he had more oh. than 80 battles and he only had 11 losses oh, okay. so he had like 69 wins I'd, if we just nice. go with 80 <laughs> <laughs> he knew what he was doing <laughs> if we just go with 80 he had 69 wins and 11 losses perfect which makes him an absolute king doesn't it it's jokes that's not a bad record <laughs> um, there's more than 400 books written about this dude fucking hell most of them by him <laughs> <laughs> he does have one his own memoirs and shit like that that he released became the most popular book of the 19th century and his letters and that wasn't it his correspondence some of it like but a lot of it is, by his, like, a lot of it is when he was like later on in life he got he got time he had a lot of time to sit down and write it yeah he did the old Musashi book <laughs> <laughs> so let's how get... many body do you reckon he's got he's 80 got battles with chicks or deaths both because <laughs> 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 this dude fucked bruv yeah I bet this dude fucked because one he was French yeah they fucked Fuck. <laughs> they riot and they fuck <laughs> and then they quit. <laughs> and uh, this was also like pompous, like uh, dandy French man times. Yeah. This is when they were all fucking, bro. Yeah. This is like real fucky times. Hedonism. Proper hedonism. Titties out. Titties out. On the bridge. Powdered wigs on the bridge. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Nothing but powdered wigs or and titties sometimes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Powdered titties. Powdered titties. <laughs> they got lead powder all up them, bro. <laughs> this you fu- get retarded off them titties, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but France is wilding at this time, bro. Oh, yeah, it's a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, you mean 1796? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, that I mean, even French culture nowadays is like casual. They casual sex is a big thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. French girls all do bum sex. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I'm, I'm no expert, get but I do do strong. averages, <laughs> and in my experience, five out of five French chicks do anal. But like, so France is wilding even then. They all still fucking, and that actually armpit hair. got to do with to actually to do with. Is that the same five out of five armpit hair? Yeah, five. Out, no, that's uh, a big more than that. I'd three say three out of five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of them have armpit hair. It's like fucking, my fault. I'm like, like a dip. I was a hippie for a while. Even if we start as well, so like it's it's funny that we mention about a lot of French fucking as well as Napoleon fucking, because obviously the story of Napoleon starts with fucking. Like every human oh, being. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, gross. Even you, dude. <laughs> you made me think. Now you think of it. <laughs> but so he's born August 15th, 1769. Nice. Um, nice. <laughs> he's the king of 69. And he had 69 and then he had 69 wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he only ever ate their belly button. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was so tall. <laughs> he's born in Ajaccio, which is in Corsica. Um, and he's born a year after... Um, Corsica had just come under French control. 
Yeah, that's where all the French gangsters are. They're kind of like Italian. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, it's sort of right it's like the Sicily Italy. of France. Yeah, like yeah. The OG yeah. Mafia. They're like they were previously independent. It's like in between then, Italy and in, in, in not like France. exactly the same culture. Yeah, that's it. And like so, France got hold of like just, um, Corsica was always like rebelling against. Genoa and it's why when bit. you ask Napoleon, can you take over the world? You say Corsica can. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice. laughs> <laughs> so he was born to Carlos and uh, Letizia Bonaparte. She was only nineteen at the time, and apparently she was smoking. Like yeah, Lamar. apparently she was a smoke show, bro. Like she was the hottest chick in the Mediterranean. They said, bro. Like, oh, then. that's a hard bill to fill. <laughs> yeah, no, bro. <laughs> and they were saying that's exactly what she was. That she, she was... had the faintest mustache of all the women. <laughs> 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 and uh, it, how did they come up with such an ugly kid? Who Napoleon? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Napoleon, eighty battles will fuck with your head. <laughs> <laughs> but Letizia Bonaparte is rumored, bro, to be having an affair with a, gu- a geezer called General Louis Charles René, Comte de Mabeuf. He's the French military governor of the island, um, and he's thirty-eight years older. Nonsense. Oh, yeah, he's thirty-eight years older than the little sweet Letizia. Letizia, bro. And he'd like uh, called her to his office and he's eating cherry tomatoes and grapes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and here's the thing, he fucked too. But you fucking bet. <laughs> you fucked Napoleon's mum, bro. <laughs> <laughs> by the standard of French nobility fucking back then, yeah, they considered him a scumbag who would fuck anything. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so this dude. But maybe that was a classless thing. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe fuck anything. Dirty little animals from the street. He's like, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> uh, here in Corsica, they are sweet ones. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, like, she started sleeping with him. Um, and one of the things that perpetuate this rumour is that Napoleon ended up having a younger brother who looked nothing like any of the other Bonaparte's. Okay. Um, and the, he also, this geezer also paid for that young man and Napoleon and his older brother to go to military school. Nice. Yeah. That's where it all started. He learned to play chess, did a bit of military school. Um, there's even a story that Napoleon's certificate father, um, Carlos, I think his name was, yeah, Carlos, Carlos. who was a lawyer, um, there's a story that his pa found out about this affair and he told his wife of the dude's death. So he was like, you're fucking matey. You know that, you know that fella, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, he's just died, he has. <laughs> um, the thing is, she had only just done fucking him in the other room and he was in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a rumour bruv and I'm just saying this I heard this from heard someone who read a book who said someone right that after that uh, Carlos Letizia and this Marduf geezer had a fucking devil's threesome <laughs> oh, so Napoleon Napoleon could be, stirred porridge bruv <laughs> Napoleon could in fact Goldilocks bruv yeah, Napoleon could in fact be ready break bruv <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'm saying <laughs> He got it stirred. Oh, mate, There's a chance horrendous. that Napoleon, one of the top geezers of history, has got his come from Maybe he had double the male genetics. That's why he's so good at war. He had double male vitality. He was, you can only get that from Alex Jones. You can draw in sperm. <laughs> so they really were just fucking anything. Anything and everyone all the time. Yeah. It's the French, bruv. It's, they're good at it. Do you know what I mean? So he's like, you know who's died, don't you? She's like, you want to have the fucking actual devil's threesome then? <laughs> with a zombie. With a zombie, man. he's in there, hard as a rock. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he didn't, but this is all just hearsay rumours and stuff. But, you know, sometimes it's fun to perpetuate propaganda about the podium. 100%. He's a we're midget pro- who is bred in a devil's threesome. And w- <laughs> after this, we're pr- pretty much about to start singing his praises. But... um yeah, he, he wasn't from... Well, none of that was his fault, was it? None of that was yeah. his fault at all, bro. It's legit. Exactly. And on top of that, um, he, like... he his, uh, When Genoa formally ceded the island to France, right, there was a dude called Paoli. So when Corsica mm. actually went to France, there was a dude named Paoli who rose in revolt against Sounds like France and that. It does, doesn't it? And Carlio and Letizia... Um, were actually at this point pregnant with Napoleon. Oh. And uh they uh they ended up joining Paoli. Oh, so is he an Italian? What's that? Paoli. No, no, he's he's Genoan as well. He's oh. a Geno uh, oh sorry, where where is it there from? <coughs> Corsican. He's uh he's Corsican as well. He's like a Corsican nationalist. Oh. He's like fuck. Oh France. right, yeah, he wants independence. Yeah, that's it. And um he they joined Paoli and fl- uh, flee with the insurgents into the mountains near Corte. 
And after the failure of the rebellion in May 1769, uh, the couple returned to Agicio. And uh, Carlos, who's a lawyer at the time, he was helping Paoli out. He ends up fucking Paoli over. I thought you were going to say fucking Paoli. No, <laughs> yeah, just because <laughs> it's French. He ends up fucking Paoli, o- uh, fucking Paoli over and joining the French side after that. Oh, nice. So, again, yeah. another thing which is shitty for Napoleon. But it's kind of his not his fault. His dad was a loser. Well, his half a dad was a loser. <laughs> In it, bro. And apparently oh. he resented his dad for that. Like, as he was growing up later, he was a bit of a Corsican nationalist. Yeah. Oh, and he was nice. like, Dad, you're a fucking punk for that. Nice That's a pussy moves. Pitch move, Dad. So, yeah, he comes from a bit of a pitch. August 15th, 1769, though, is when this potential spawn of a devil's threesome was born. And according to Lev- legend... Um, Letizia gave birth at home on a carpet of the living room where battles of the Iliad and the Odyssey were woven into the blanket he was born on. That's gangster. That's a good little legend, isn't it? That's a good legend. Yeah, I'll have that that's one. That's also Rob. true. <laughs> <laughs> it was short, but by fuck, was that a cool way to get born? <laughs> 1777, his pa, um, this is when his pa abandons the Corsican resistance against France, ceases being a lawyer to the patriot Pasquale Paoli. Carlo began working for the new French government and was named representative of the island to the court of Louis the Sixteenth. This apparently was something Napoleon gr- felt great shame for when growing up. Yeah, he was just a Romainer. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> 1779, he was sent to mainland France to attend school in Autun. He was bullied for not being able to speak French that well. Oh, yeah, he's got he's a fucking Corsica. hillbilly accent. And if, and, oh, like, fair so, play to him. French was his third language, Rob. Oh, shit. He spoke Corsican, Italian, and then at 10 years old was trying to learn French and got sent to a French military school. Mm. Was, was the French language the same as it is today? What, shitty? <coughs> yeah, but I mean, like, you know, like... Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. You know, like, we used to have a half to how and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's like modern French. Well. Yeah. Or was there, Ooh, I think I it was know. even modern Greek by now as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Everything's modern. It was like... Why's our language 15, changed so much? Uh, we got less posh. Keep getting yeah. invaded. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mongols. no, but we've changed it since we haven't been invaded. Like Shakespeare to us, is what invaded. I'm saying. Invaded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so oh, yeah, culturalism, bro. He, he was bullied <laughs> for slow, uh, speaking slowly in French with a bad accent. Um, and he, he starts like withdrawing from hanging out with other kids and stuff, but he gets really into his books. Yeah. Really into his books and reading. No, uh, it's he's, all books. He's particularly obsessed with reading stories about three geezers Hannibal Barca. Nice. Julius Caesar. Ooh. Alexander the Great. Yeah, boy. Uh, Julius, maybe not so much. <laughs> <laughs> but the other guy's cool as fuck. 1784, he ends up um, enrolling at the Royal Military School in Brienne Lachetto. In 1785, he transfers to the Igoli Militaire in Paris. He's an excellent student. Due to bullying, he kept to himself a lot and was obsessed with reading and writings. Um, library nerd. Library nerd. Annabelle Barcelona. They won't beat you up in front of the librarian. <laughs> <laughs> she'll be well nice to you. And she'll fucking yell at them bullies. Go away. Yeah, boy. Leave, you draw all the furry porn you want. <laughs> <laughs> Leave poor little Napoleon alone, she's telling them, bro. 1786, he graduates as a second lieutenant in the artillery. Turns off a trench coat with a cannon. That's all bro. But yeah, I mean, second lieutenant, that's pretty high up. It's not bad. Yeah, I think so. In this, in, but no, here's Lots the thing. Stripes. Artillery, divi- artillery divisions back then weren't really respected by like French nobles and that. Yeah, they like sword fighting and cavalry, don't they? Yeah, the reason it, it, they weren't really respected is because you kind of actually had to know stuff yeah. to be an artillery sergeant. Yeah. And that wasn't cool with French nobility. You were meant to be as dumb as a box oh, of yeah. rocks and about fucking. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, just laying around like an old Greek god. Yeah, that's it. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. French as fuck. Not much Proper has French changed, about it. Is it like, we're the same. We are the same. Yeah, it's true. Like the talentless hoes be getting. Mm. I mean, yeah, a lot of talented people do get shit, but then you yeah. also get just fucking retards getting shit. Yeah. Like no one listens to our podcast either. We're no. <laughs> either. <laughs> what do you mean? Stories. <laughs> 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 Don't listen to them, you six guys. You stay strong. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Um, oh, well, sorry, guys. Sort of cough, see. See, yeah, but he, he, he doesn't he doesn't like just being lieutenant. And not only that, like he wasn't going to be respected by much nobility anyway, um, because his family were like very, 
Well, yeah, that. And his, his family were very minor nobles either. I know I said earlier about him being a Drake song. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah, no, he's not really. But he's not really from the bottom. He was like, Corsica's a small place anyway, right? And his family were one of the lower noble families on Corsica. Oh, yeah, true. Like, and he was. Just, he even says himself, like, the, Cor- the, the Bonaparte family had never left Corsica. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Losers. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking <laughs> cucking with the same ten people they've been fucked with. Over and over again, bro. That's Swiss. a cult, isn't it? It, it is, much, pretty much. That must much. be where they all started. No, yeah, it's probably. Habsburg times now as well, isn't it? He is fucking with some Habsburgs later Habsburgs on. Yeah, he does fuck around with some Habsburgs. Out right now. Yeah, they are fully chinned, bro. And he's slapping <laughs> them chins about. Yeah, he's boxing... He's boxing their chins like he's Beethoven, boy. Yeah, Beethoven's about. <laughs> yeah, Beethoven's about. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> 1789. Something big happens, bro. The storming of the Bastille. Oi, oi. France. Big, big old fucking event. Big old event. The Probably start... got a lady hero for it or something, can't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the start of the French Revolution, cuz. Yeah, boy. This is when a bunch of French geezers go and storm the Bastille, get a few mates out of jail. Everyone got cake. Yeah, everyone got cake. Everyone got off a cake. During this, Napoleon returns to Corsica to aid the nationalist uprising in Corsica. Nice. Um, during the upheaval in France, he hero worships the patriot Pasquale Paoli. Ooh. Who his daddy Jesus, used to work for and fucked yeah. over. He's one of them. Paoli had no sympathy for Napoleon. Yeah, he's like, I don't care if you hate your dad. I hate your dad. Yeah, he's like, I fucking hate you because you're a Bonaparte, you piece like, of shit. He's not even my dad. Um, as he deemed I'm his the devil's porridge. <laughs> 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 he deemed his father a traitor for having deserted the course of Corsican independence. So he spent the early years of the revolution in Corsica fighting in a complex three-way struggle among royalists Revolution. Sounds like his conception. <laughs> <laughs> Royalist revolutionaries and Corsican nationalists. After being shunned by Paoli, Napoleon embraced the ideas of the revolution and becoming a supporter of the Jacobins and joining the pro-French Corsican Republicans who opposed Paoli's policy and his aspirations to secede. So really, Paoli was right all along, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> really. Do you know what I mean? <coughs> Another Once Bonaparte. Bonaparte. Oh, it's a Bonaparte. That's it. Another Bonaparte fucked Paoli over, bro. Yeah. How are you going to fuck up pasta like that? Yeah. It's not on, is it? Don't be fucking with the ravioli Paoli, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 1792, March 6th. He's promoted to captain in the French Revolutionary Army. Nice. See, I'm thinking as though. This is year one, isn't it? Uh, I think so. It's pretty easy to get promoted in the French Revolutionary Army, I think. Yeah, you just fucking lick ass. And not only that, it's like, like the Communist Party. A lot of the higher up geezers keep getting executed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, there's there's a lot of job positions going. Yeah. So he's trying to work his way up it, during the French Revolution. I think that's from get go. That is like, I ain't here about. I don't want to listen to the Rolling Stones. Sit around and smoke a joint with you fucking polit- political hippies. Yeah. I'm going to start making my way up in the military while all this shit's popping off. Like how the CIA used the hippie movement and that. Yeah, I guess, yeah. But yeah. now I'm the king of your minds. <laughs> <laughs> so he was in the Revolutionary Army. He was in the Revolutionary Army, yeah. He was. <coughs> August 10th. But the- is that like how it's. Like after I mean, the revolution, the French, they just the- call it the Revolutionary yeah, Army. Yeah, it's storm. exactly they that. They weren't overthrowing and guilty. It's exactly and shit. that. It's exactly that. It's like commie shit. Yeah. People's August 10th the fall, uh, is the fall of the monarchy at Tillers Palace during the French Revolution, 1792, August 10th. On September 20th, 1792, French Revolution score a victory at the Battle of Valmy against the Austrian Empire. So Napoleon ain't there um, during this. I just th- thought it's worth mentioning because it's the first coalition. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's the first coalition of like... Basically, the rest of Europe weren't happy during the French Revolution. Yeah. Because French turned around to all these other European countries. French. France turned around to these other European countries and been like, guys, check this out. We just fucking killed our kings. Yeah. How sick is this? <laughs> yeah. And all the other countries were like, yo, that's our cousins and we're still the yeah, kings of these. Because those A hundred years later, that. they did it with communism. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same sort of thing. And uh, yeah, all the other countries were like, Yo, you, that's not cool, France. Mm. So they all teamed up and made coalitions against France. Yeah. One of the first countries to invade and try and fuck France over during this time was Austria, which isn't what Austria is now. It's like basically Germany. Yeah. Yeah. Hedy Lamar is Austrian. 
Huh? Hedy Lamar was Austrian. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, so... So basically they just don't want the little man to have any power. No, they just don't... Yeah, they don't want the common geezer. Yeah. They just don't want anyone taking over. Yeah. I mean, technically, was the French Re- Revolution just common geezers? I mean, they were doing their head in, but they weren't the people taking power. Yeah. But it's still the little man. It's non-royalty. Yeah. Yeah. It's non-people of these bloodlines taking power. And these other European countries weren't happy. But, despite everything going on in their country, the French Revolutionary Army still fucked up, fucked up Austria at Valmy. Nice. It's pretty impressive. What nice happened one. to the French? I don't know. They, they're pretty fucking cool. They used cool. to be good. They used to be pretty fucking cool, yeah. Rob. Um, September 20th. I know, I've just done that. November 22nd. He uh, he's still working his way up the ranks somehow. He's uh, promoted to brigadier general. Nice. Yeah, he's doing all right. Do you reckon anybody else in the army is like moving out of France as well, making more like people higher up in the military? Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. saying like they was getting executed. Do you yeah, yeah. Any of them are leaving as well because they oh, didn't like, agree with it. Oh, a thousand percent. I mean, I think it was quite hard to uh, leave, especially around this time. Because around this time, 1793, so we're just ending 1792 with that, pretty much. But 1793, 92 is during what's known as um, the Reign of Terror during the French Revolution. Do you guys know much about that? No. It's when this geezer named Robespierre was leading one of the governments, and basically everyone was getting executed. Yeah. Imagine when cancel culture was at its height yeah. in like 2019, yeah. maybe 2019, yeah, yeah. yeah I've mm. said so. 2018, COVID, whatever. Yeah. But imagine that everyone who was getting cancelled on Twitter yeah. was actually getting guillotined and their heads cut off. Yeah. yeah. That's what the reign of terror was. Yeah. People getting cancelled. Neighbour the... snitching and all that as well. Yeah, everything. And people were just like getting, for the slightest thing, like, everyone was like, yeah, you're not revolutionary enough. Fucking stick yeah. him, stick him on go. the guillotine. What was it called when the commies killed all the old people as well in China? Oh, shit, I know it's what you're like talking about. It's one of about. them. It's just it's like a them. cleansing. Isn't it? <laughs> it is just a cleansing. Anyone that yeah. ain't up for this new one. But it wasn't particularly like... Here's the thing is like, usually they have like a particular group of people. Yeah. Like the same Chinese communists, the old people. Yeah. Nazis didn't like the, those guys who wear but the little hats. they people. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like... um but these guys were just ah uh, anyone. Anybody, yeah. You just yeah. ain't revolutionary enough. <laughs> Do you, know what I mean? you ain't a hippie. I was about to a little French guy. Bring him in. <laughs> <laughs> no, honey, that's all I see. You're not revolutionary enough. <laughs> <laughs> I had him. <laughs> Pretty much, like in the beret and that, trying to be all cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly what happened, Rob. More um, cigarettes. <laughs> Your hat is uh, too small. <laughs> Little hat. This is a like fucking Gok Wan. hundred percent exactly what I was thinking. French Gok Wan. So like much anorexic French Gok Wan. <laughs> in a beret and a stripy shirt. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was in Gok in that. <laughs> but with an onion. So the, the reign of terror is getting so crazy that in July 13th, 1793, Napoleon's actually arrested. Oh, no, you don't. Yeah. No, you but not didn't. being revolutionary now. <laughs> yeah, 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 but he yeah, so yeah. literally slipped through the bars. <laughs> <laughs> he does get out in the end because he's actually homies with R- Rob Spierre's brother. Oh, nice. So he ends up finding a fucking little way out. Do you reckon that. that done him over? Do you reckon he wasn't that revolutionary before? And then after that, he's like, I've got to prove myself. I guess because that same year, um, a month later, on 29th of August, it's um, the Battle of Toulon. The Battle of Toulon is a... Toulon's a British-held city mm. at the time. And... Uh, Napoleon, this is when Napoleon actually becomes the hero of that battle. So before he's even like anything, he's only a brigadier general at the moment, he's in yeah. charge of the cannons, and he comes up with a plan on the battlefield, mid-battle, to capture a hill where Republican guns could dominate the city's harbour and force the British to evacuate. The assault on the position led to the capture of the city, and during it, Bonaparte was wounded in the thigh. Um, and uh, yeah, after that, like everyone was hyping him up. Because yeah. apparently he, he carried on through this wound. Who'd have thought of putting a fucking cannon on a hill? <laughs> <laughs> He's a boy, isn't he? <laughs> but apparently he fought so fer- ferociously and shit like that. Yeah. Like the generals of the army at the time kept giving him mad props and bigging him up. Kudos to the guy who shot him, though, like a small target. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But he fucking got, he was like ripping dudes apart and then getting the cannon. He was the hero of Toulon. This was his big breakthrough moment. I reckon he had that moment. thing like yeah. when you're in like a football team or something and you're not playing too well, you're not like, everyone hates you. Yeah. Right. Bit like David Beckham, maybe. Yeah, after, yeah, after yeah, the, yeah, that's the, like, it. red card. Yeah. And then comes back. He's like, oh, I've got a point to prove now. The thing is, he yeah. didn't even have a red card. People were just, he's just a fella. He's just another fella. He's just a chave. No, his red card was getting arrested. 
Oh yeah, Being maybe. Told yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man, so you ain't nice. revolutionary enough. You want to see revolutions? <laughs> Fucking watch this. Pulls out his sword, gets shots in the leg, and carries on, bro. And imagine what a motivator he was to make French people push cannons uphill. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 more cigarettes. To maybe tomorrow. <laughs> and he's like, you're gonna pull the fucking gun now. <laughs> Who's going to carry the guns? <laughs> Who's going to carry the cannons, bruv? Napoleon Bonaparte was the original Goggins, bruv. Yeah. And he kind of was because he was known for his speeches. Like, yeah. really well known for his speeches. And and also for the troops, like, when he did become the big daddy, they fucking love him. Like, the troops absolutely love yeah. him, bruv. He's um, doing his own, like, Bob Hope shit. Yeah, show, yeah, like, the, What do they call him? The VA parade or whatever. Yeah, where yeah, yeah, yeah. The VA party to... and that, yeah. <laughs> but it's just him. Just Napoleon on stage, fucking yeah. tearing people, fucking quotes out. So it's history. like every time they don't have to send anyone. Yeah, oh, fucking Napoleon, Napoleon up. Yeah, after dinner, Napoleon say some cool shit. He gets up with a tight. Who's gonna carry the boats? <laughs> <laughs> he gets up with a tight ten. <laughs> you reckon he was like original Mister Motivator on like an exercise bike or something? Yeah, bike, yeah, right? yeah. And they're all following him in a massive big fucking. Drive. I'm pretty sure that's actually in Bill and Ted. You know. Yeah. yeah there's something with Napoleon uh, and a. Uh, Nice Joan of Arc does the Mr. Motivator scene. Sorry, bro. Mis- oh, yeah, mis- misremembering that. 6th, 16th, uh, 16th of December. What year are we in? We're still in 1793. Um, he's now started catching the attention of the Committee of Public Safety of the Revolutionary Government. <laughs> I hate these commie names. <laughs> <laughs> the, the French Revolution wasn't commie, it was Republican. Yeah, I know, but like it's like they. After revolution, they give themselves these fancy names. <laughs> like, no, you're the defence like committee, the French, or the ministry of defence. The, the, like, no, the we're the safety organisers of the whole revolutionary lovely people. I quite dig the French <laughs> Republic. Revolution, as much as it went crazy with the reign of terror. I do dig the French Revolution, because it was actually just heavily inspired by the American Revolution, which, again, I get behind, because it's just geezers disliking the British monarchy. Yeah. Or do you reckon this is where all these crazy country... Like what I'm talking about, the stupid spazzy names for everything, like yeah. peoples, all this. Yeah. Like in Africa, the Democratic People's Republic of like, yeah, 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 all yeah. that is because it's French. French invented this dumb shit. Oh, and yeah. And then the French colonised Africa. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt, right? No doubt. That makes sense, Rob. Um, so, yeah, he's, got, he's caught the attention of the public safety, uh, the Committee of the Public Safety, and he's put in charge of the artillery of France's Army of Italy. Nice. So he's. On his way up, bruv. So just, yeah, so didn't they give him like a... This is like a proper hard task. The the artillery in Italy is all spread out all over the place. Yeah, I mean... And they're like, yeah, go on then. If you want to be the general, go take these guys. It's not like, quite, it's not quite that yet. It's not tight as fuck. It's not that, it's uh. not that yet. It's not that yet. He's just been made in charge of the artillery of the France's army of Italy. Um, 22nd, he had to find him though, didn't he? 22nd December, he was on his way to a new post in Nice. Um, he was promoted from colonel to brigadier general at the age of 24. Um, and he... Uh, devised plans to attack the kingdom of Sardinia as part of uh, France's campaign against the First Coalition. Nice. So it's not quite that the Italian jo- uh, situation yet. Oh, uh, right. So who was in this but First I thought coalition? he got given the like, Italian artillery or whatever, yeah. but they were on exercise. They no, were all not spread that. out over Italy and Austria. That's Is that another thing? That's another thing. Oh, that's right. Another thing. 1794, the French army carried out Bonaparte's plan in the Battle of um, Seorgio. He wasn't there, but this was a plan he came up with, and they executed that. Um, and then advanced to seize Omiya in the mountains. From Omiya, it headed west to outflank the Austro-Sardinian positions around Seorgi. After this... Um, oh, I know, shit, Napoleon was there for that. Sorry, my bad. And after this campaign, Augustin Robespierre sent Bonaparte on a mission to the Republic of Genoa to determine the country's intentions towards France. So back where he sort of came from, yeah. around Corsica way. But there still isn't, I know exactly what you're talking about, there's still not the Italian campaign. That comes uh, later. Okay, so Because that's a fucking bossy campaign. Like, for reals. Yeah. Napoleon smashes that campaign, bro. 1795, moving on. October 3rd is a big one for Napoleon. This is another one of his big ones. Everything's big to Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> October th- was it, a horse? <laughs> October 3rd is... Um, <laughs> It's known as the 13 Vendemere. So this might be one another one of their fucking June. calendar things. Um, October 3rd, he crushes the Royalist... Oh, October then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He crushes the Royalist uprising in Paris. Uh, so what happened is a bunch of Royalists together. all got together, wanted to get rid of this Republican army, and Napoleon orders a cavalry officer to bring in a bunch of cannons, fucking load them up with grape shot, and just start scattering them at the Royalists. Mate. Yeah, fucking giant shotguns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. genius. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> what you do with the fucking and all the royals are dumb as fuck as well because it's popular and they all got lead poisoning and syphilis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're just there, like, what are we doing? Like, I've seen that of idiocracy or something. <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna get together and uh, get our throne back or something. You cool. seen how the the peasants rioted? <laughs> Let's try that. And then yeah, he turns up with cannons and grape shot. Like, fuck. <laughs> Um, he used them to repel the attackers. Uh, he kills 1,400 royalists. Fucking hell. Yeah, bruv. Um, the rest fled. He cleared the streets with a whiff of grape shot. And that's what the event is known as. A, a whiff. A whiff of grape shot. Just the whiff. According to 19th century historian Thomas Carlyle, the defeat of the royalist insurrection extinguished the threat to the convention and earned Bonaparte sudden fame, wealth, and the patronage of the new government, the Directory. Oh, I bet he had some fucking bars as well. <laughs> if they like to eat grapes, <laughs> let them eat grapes. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, ah! <laughs> Murat married one of Bonaparte's um, sisters. So this guy who was high up in the government married one of Bonaparte's sisters. He also served one of Bonap- as one of Bonaparte's generals. Bonaparte was promoted to the commander of the interior and given command of the army of Italy. Nice. Like the this is the one. Then he goes and finds him. <laughs> <laughs> now he's balling. And he takes an elephant because he loves Hannibal so much. <laughs> <laughs> now he's balling out of control. Yeah. Like whiling. He's finally replacing his old boots because he hadn't replaced his boots since military school. What a boy. He's yeah. like, I don't deserve new boots shit. Yeah, that's it. He's like, that's a foot you could put up someone's ass. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so now he's got himself a fancy new pair of boots. Um, he's rolling around in fancy carriages. He's he's made it from the bottom and now he's here, cuz. Yeah, he's boy. There, bruv. He's partying with the upper crust. He's wearing fancy clothes. And but the thing is, he falls for one ratchet hoe, bro. Oh, yeah. Josephine. Yeah, there's a chick. Uh, Josephine's not even her real name. I didn't write her real name. Cause Josephine is, yeah, her, real Josephine name, is her real name. She was one of them French chicks. Yeah, bro. So she was the wid- widow of a previous French general who was killed at the guillotine and the current mistress of Napoleon's homie in the new French government, the directory. Mm. That's what did he know about that though? He knew about all this. He's just like his dad. <laughs> <laughs> He's not cool, man. Um, she's now broke, and she seeked out someone to help maintain her lavish lifestyle. She was used to uh, what she was used to. Why don't she get killed for being a bourgeois? In it, bro. And here's the thing: she bourgeois. was also an heiress to a now defunct Caribbean sugar plantation. Um, so her teeth were black and nubs from a childhood habit of sucking on sugar cane. Gummy as fuck. Oh, fuck. What are you doing, Napoleon, bro? I know you're short, but fucking hell, at least you're rich. You could do better than that. She had also no fondness of Napoleon. It's just one of them... Maybe that was his thing. Maybe it was. Um, his mum ignored him and hoed, so she... he wants a fucking ignorant hoe. Well, apparently his mum was like quite a discipli- disciplinary. Oh, like is it? Discipl- so he's disciplinarian. Kinky as well. He's kinky as well. He's got that mummy fetish, bro. <laughs> oh, Oedipus. <laughs> and, um, she, yeah, so she had no fondness of Napoleon. She hated the way he liked to snuggle up in her lap. So he liked to, like, fucking curl up like oh, a little cat on her lap. Those she original is, furry. Um, yeah, she hated the fact that he liked a little spoon. And she would read his love letters. So he would write her love letters. She'd read them back and put him on the spot. She'd read them aloud to party guests. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, even worse, bro. She'd read them aloud oh, to party guests. Cringe. Wouldn't reply to them. Read them aloud to party guests and fucking mock him and shit. And was she partying with people that had, like, Byron's out there? Yeah, yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? They're yeah, like, yeah, that's, yeah. That's not a poem. This is a poem. And he's yeah, like, that's it. <laughs> He wasn't at these parties when she was doing that, but that's the type oh, of shit, shit she was doing. Oh, shit, so it was even worse. Yeah. She was just spreading his dick behind his back. Yeah, behind his back. Literally. (laughs) The ladies group chat. 1796. So he's met her. He's fallen in love with his... I don't know why he's done that, but this is what's happened, bro. 1796. What the fuck is it? He made this bitch a fountain as well, I remember. I thought it was like one of the great romances. I didn't realise she was a skis bag. Oh, yeah, bro. She's a skis bag, but he becomes a bit of a skis as well. But she's a skis bag as well, bro. Yeah, but men are allowed to be. Women's disgusting when they skis about. They're also (laughs) French. (laughs) (laughs) 1796, late February. Napoleon receives word that he is to take the French army to Italy. Oi, oi. So he hastily organises to wed Josephine before he leaves. Oh, what an idiot. Parts. No, up. <laughs> uh, do you want another creepy thing? Do you know I said her name's not Josephine? Mm. Her real name's something else. Guess who gave her the name Josephine? Uh, the fucking general. Napoleon. Oh, he just called her Josephine. Guess what uh, Napoleon's older brother's name was? 
No, Joseph. <laughs> Joseph. Oh. He's a Freudian little <laughs> fucking weirdo, bro. <laughs> the mainland all twisted. <laughs> but here's the thing. When he does, like, on the way up, on the way up, he keeps bringing his brother with him, which is pretty gangster. All of his he's brothers. Fuck, yeah, he fancies him, yeah. Well, no, all of his brothers, not just Joseph. All of the brothers come up with him. He gets them all Christie's job. Christie's and they look like Hanson. <laughs> Joseph is the middle one that was the <laughs> little <laughs> chick. Um, so March 2nd, he marries Josephine. Um, and Josephine becomes jo- Josephine uh, Bonaparte and he gives her a, a medallion it's inscribed with to destiny okay <laughs> <laughs> only two days after they're married she's at a party going to destiny let's <laughs> say <laughs> 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 destiny <laughs> two days after they marry he leaves uh, Paris as the commander in chief of the French army in Italy his army are meant to be merely a distraction on this front as the main army defend against Austria. So his army is under-equipped and low on morale. Yeah, so I always thought that you might have set in low on morale. Yeah. So, so what's the plan? You're going to attack the mainland, just a few of you. Yeah. What? Yeah, you're the distraction. Yeah. But when they kill the distraction? Y- yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to all be in boats and if it's okay, we're going to land. <laughs> nah, there's got to be another way. <laughs> Distraction. <laughs> March 27th, he lands in Nice to lead the army. And this is when he starts fucking rolling it. I'm going about to get through some dates and some battles pretty quickly. 12th of April, 1796, Bonaparte defeats an Austrian Piedmontese army at the Battle of Motinotti. His first victory in command of an army. This is his first ever oh, victory. Oh, he's actually the fucking puppeteer this Yeah. Time. Next uh, um, next battle, 28th of April, so only a few days later, 1796, General Bonaparte secures the surrender of Piedmont Sardinia with the armistice of Churrasco. Then on the 10th of May, 1796, the Battle of Lodi results in another French victory over Austria. 15th of May, 1796, Bonaparte's army of Ent- uh, Italy enters Milan. So three battles off the trot. Pa, pa, pa. Yeah, boy. Just so fucking like... win, win, win. Out the bottom right hand side of yeah. France, across the bottom of Austria, into the top of Italy. That's it. And uh, <clears throat> go shopping in Milan. By this point, Napoleon. Get Josephine a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> by this point, Napoleon is a fan favourite of the troops, bro. Mm. They went from being low morale to fucking loving this yeah. geezer, thinking he's the absolute Donny. Um, he's giving stirring speeches. Uh, and he seems unstoppable because troops are writing letters home about how dope he is and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, fucking... I'm so sorry. You're alone at war. It must be so sad and wet. No. <laughs> this dude grown. is a blast. <laughs> <laughs> He's only little, right? But yeah. fuck me the size of him. <laughs> he sits on my shoulder there and just tells me what to do and we go divvy. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know how many geezers I've killed with him on my shoulders. It's yeah. fucking mental. Um... Yeah, uh, even the Italian people cheer him as a, li- a liberator of Austra- Austrian oppression as he oh, rides sick. through their streets. Yeah, bro. After he takes Milan, here, he writes to Josephine requesting requesting that she travels to him. And don't wash her cooter. It is. It is, is that, it that, it that, is that letter. letter yeah, it's that meme letter. <laughs> like, so there's a meme going around about um, uh, Napoleon writing fire. Like, all the parchment is on fire around him and it's how he writes to Josephine and says... You know, don't wash because I want to fucking taste you. <laughs> now, getting into that, right? Um, she is a skis bag. So, it's, obviously, her bag is full of skis. She's <laughs> only been married to him for two months, yeah. right? She's already I fucking started an affair with some other geezer. That's when you get him, though. A young cavalry captain. Um, so, he writes to Josephine requesting she travels up to him and she just starts making bare excuses. Yeah. Um, yeah that's it but actually she's just back in Paris banging dudes um, she tries the old oh I can't travel because I'm pregnant mm-hmm. um, was she pregnant? no she weren't pregnant she was fucking lying about it the whole time yeah. Yeah. Uh, for some reason he manages to man, does eventually manage to persuade her to travel and here's the thing she does travel to Milan to see Napoleon but she brings her fucking lover in the carriage with her that's what I end up oh, fucking anyway just like his daddy <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is when he writes the don't wash letter to her just before she leaves with yeah because so, he wants that porridge in there because he wants a son <laughs> he doesn't even yeah. <laughs> he's going to be just like me that's what I'm saying bro he doesn't even know that he's about to be chowing down on some other dude's porridge cottage bro. cheesing bro yeah it's fucking nasty three day old carriage ride yeah. cottage pussy that's it bro <laughs> you dirty bastard <laughs> 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 here's the 
Here's the thing, when, when she arrives in Milan with like all of her fucking workers and that, because they all know that she's banging this dude. Yeah. Everyone knows he's, ba- he's she's banging this dude. Napoleon's yeah. probably got a chance knowing that she's banging this dude. Yeah, true. Um, but everyone's because like, everyone loved him. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't like let well, him get away with it out in town. Here's the thing: when they all came to, uh, the lads used to tell him, and he used to ignore him apparently. But when all of her staff and everyone turned up at the yard in Milan, um, everyone's acting all sus around Napoleon. Like nobody, will, like nobody will make eye contact with him and shit. Oh, because they're embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. So he's fucking the clocked anyway. Fucking it's like when you're onshore. trying to tell your mate that that bird's a psycho and he just doesn't fucking doesn't listen. listen yeah. Uh, here's the thing: nothing, nothing said of this phantom pregnancy either. It's just never mentioned again. Is that so okay? No, but then reportedly she does only spend two days with him in Milan before, once she arrives, but spends the entire two days with him just crying. <laughs> I reckon he fucking gave her what for, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He gave her the fucking riot or act, Chevy. he's like, or it's that, or... She misses dick that much. She faked a miscarriage, bro. Yeah. Oh, they're the worst ones. I reckon it's that. Because if there's this phantom pregnancy going on, then it's yeah. never spoken about it after that. And the only two days she does spend with him when she's he's in Milan, she farts she's out of fucking and crying and shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so either he's a tyrant, which we kind of know he actually yeah. is, and he just fucking bollocked her for two days. Mm. Or she's a devious hoe, which we also know she yeah. actually is, and she would do some mad shit like that. So that's right in heaven, saying. isn't it? They are just tox- the yeah. most perfect toxic couple, bro. Um, French as fuck. <laughs> French as fuck. Imagine how many cigarettes they went through during an <laughs> argument. <laughs> Fucking loads, bro. Two packs Every each. time they make a point, they stub it out <laughs> to be extra French. <laughs> They've got like, another one for the next point they make. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Napoleon ain't got time for this EastEnders bullshit, bro. He gets back to work after two days. With yeah, the you know. She misses the street dick and he misses <laughs> fucking killing dudes with his bare hands. <laughs> 2nd of June, 1796. Bonaparte's army of Italy lay siege to Mantua. That siege does last a fucking while all the way into the next year. Um, but it doesn't matter. Same year, in fifth, uh, he leaves that siege and goes and starts some other battles, leaves the boys there looking after the gates. 5th of August, 1796. General Bonaparte defeats Austrian General Worms, uh, Wormser at the Battle of Castillon. 8th of September, 1796. Bonaparte defeats Wormser again at the First Battle of Bassano. 15th of November, the Battle of Arcole results in a French victory over Austria. 14th of January, General Bonaparte's Army of Italy wins the Battle of Rivi- uh, Rivoli, ending in Austrian control of northern Italy. Is that one year's worth of battles? Yeah, bro. He's just fucking Austria what a up. fucking constantly. monster. Every battle during his Italian came, uh, campaign, all W's, no losses, bro. Yeah, boy. Not a single battle lost in his Italian campaign. Yeah, he's starting a 69 yet, boy. <laughs> How? What a fucking Donny, though, bro. That's a big man move and a half. Um, this coalition you were saying about, this is the first one. Yeah, the first coalition. Is yeah. it Austria and who else? If it's um, I'm not 100% innit? sure. I think Hungary, definitely. Yeah, Hungary or... um, I don't know if Britain's involved. We may be. Oh, we most likely yeah. are. I think we're involved in pretty much all the coalitions because <laughs> yeah. us and France have got a big, like, beef going we it's a rivalry with... they're charging income tax just to fuck with them yeah that's it yeah. but you know yeah. we worked together in the second opium wars which I always found quite nice we spoke about that didn't we yeah. we're all, always at each other's throats yeah. but when it comes down to it fucking with China making sure the Nazis don't come about taking fuck over it, the Middle East taking over the Middle East yeah. the important shit yeah no we they weren't down together. for Iraq were they um, no but they were down for fucking that. Palestine weren't they well that's why they got a foreign legion as well actually <laughs> so uh yeah, after all of that, after the ending the war with the First Coalition, Bonaparte marched on Venice and forced its surrender, ending 1,100 uh, 1, years of Venetian independence. He authorised the French to loot treasures such as the horses of St. Mark and dozens of famous Italian art, filling, um, and he ends up just filling up the Louvre. We haven't been talking about this last week. Yeah, like robbing all the best fucking yeah, artists in the yeah. country. Yeah, There's Nepo- some similarities here with him and Adolf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Adolf like, modelled himself, didn't he? Yeah. Sort of. So there's this other thing. Um, I'm not going to really be able to bring it up anywhere else, but with Adolf and Napoleon. So Napoleon's got... You can visit his tomb in yeah. Notre Dame. I don't know if you can anymore, yeah. obviously. Mm. In Notre Dame Cathedral. But when Hitler got to there and wanted to visit his tomb, Napoleon designed his tomb so that you had to lower your head. Yeah, so you got to bow at his body. Yes, yeah, so you have to <laughs> bow when you look at his body. Pretty <laughs> fucking clever dude. Um, and Hitler obviously even though he respected Napoleon he was like I don't want to bow to this piece of shit yeah. so he got um, his um, officers to set up a series of mirrors <laughs> so he could still see Napoleon's tomb and wouldn't have to bow to him 
Why don't you just squat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just walk in in a squat and be like, yeah, bow this motherfucker. I'm taking Shoot a, a shit. single leg through the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up. And then just smoke a cigarette there, just so you know. Yeah, like, yeah fuck you, bro. That's not disrespectful in France. Oh, yeah, it's true. They do that everywhere. <laughs> so uh, Napoleon was a big looter. He was all about fucking stealing art. Yeah, artwork and, and fucking yeah. statues yeah. and that. He's That's pretty cool. much the reason most Italian art is in the Louvre now. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Like a thousand percent. That's that. He he filled up that motherfucker. French hate Italy as well. Yeah. On the journey, Bonaparte com- um, conversed much about the warriors of antiquity, especially Alexander, Caesar, Scipio, and Hannibal. He studied studied their strategy and combined it with his own. To a question from Burian asking whether he preferred Alexander or Caesar, Bonaparte said that he would place Alexander in the first rank, the main reason being his campaigns in Asia. Mm. Um, I have fought 60 battles and I have learned nothing which I did not know at the beginning. Look at Caesar. He fought the first like the last. Caesar. In his Italian campaign, Bonaparte's army captured 150,000 prisoners. 540 cannons and 170 standards. The French army fought 67 actions and won 18 pitched battles through superior artillery technology and Bonaparte's tactics. Did they carry them flags around with them? What, all the stolen ones? Yeah. Just fucking nick them and stick them in the backpack, didn't you? Yeah, you well, can't be carrying them. Because they're you know, fuck load of fucking Or well, you burn them later, didn't you? Yeah. You have a little burning party well, later. You wait you burn the, the next battle you burn in the Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. We fucking got and burn them up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Start whipping yourself. Wait, wrong place. <laughs> During the campaign, Bonaparte became increasingly influential in French politics. He founded two newspapers, one for the troops in his army and one for circulation in France. The royalists attacked him for looting Italy and warned that he might become a dictator. Too late, Hob. <laughs> <laughs> Bonaparte's forces extracted an estimated $45 million in funds from Italy during their campaign. Um, another 12 million in precious metals and jewels. He, his forces confiscated more than 300 priceless paintings and sculptures. Genius. He took a lot, bruv. He took it's the funding the war chest on the way through, though, isn't it? Old yeah. school. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Keep the war moving. I fucking love battles. I want another one next week. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking loved the battle. Bro. We're all going to get new uniforms and big hats. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to look pimping out here. <laughs> We're going to get shiny cannons. Does it, fuck it, I want their cannons. <laughs> yeah. December 5th, 1797, Napoleon returns to Paris a hero. He met Talleyrand, France's new foreign minister, who actually ends up serving in the same capacity for Emperor Napoleon in the future. Oui, oui. And they begin to prepare to invade Britain. Oh. Punk gas, bitch! When is this? Uh, what did you say? What year, year is this? Yeah. 97, December. Yeah, so this is the year... This is what made me think of sending a fucking distraction. Because that's on. what that uh, attack on fish... Fish guard was. Oh, was it? The, ah, the, there you go. Like the, they'd egged on the Irish, like yeah. you're saying, to with the American Irish guy and the, the little contingent. Yeah. To like attack the West Coast, or the movie, or the army start moving west. And then they come. And in then from they the come east. in from France. Ah, there you go. Well, what ended up happening in February 1798, after two months of planning, Bonaparte decided that France's naval strength was not yet sufficient to confront the British Royal Navy. Because you can't fuck with the British Royal yeah, we're Navy. Yeah, fucking... Like, That's everywhere different. is sea. Sea's ours, bro. You can't walk for a day without finding the sea in Britain. That's it. We know how to <laughs> fucking sail. <laughs> <laughs> he decided on a military expedition to seize Egypt and the, uh, Egypt, and therefore undermine Britain's access to its trade interest in India. That was like, that's seen as like a fucking ego move, though, isn't it? He's yes. like trying to get the picture, like the Alexander the Great. Yes, yeah, so that's exactly it. A lot Just of people go to the pyramids. A lot of people want because what did he say? Why he preferred Alexander the Great? Because Alexander the Great had campaigns in Asia. Yeah, exactly. So Napoleon was like, I want some fucking yeah, campaigns like in that. Asia, motherfucker. It's, and he turned up and knocked all the noses off. Yeah. So someone, um, someone it's a lie, isn't it? Here is it's it's made up. Movie. They love it. Some. Um, some I don't know it's a worker isn't it some um, I heard someone referring to Napoleon going to Egypt was him trying to cosplay as Caesar oh yeah <laughs> and I was like yeah pretty fucking much but that was another dude that fell for a skis bag oh, was it oh no that's Anthony no Cleopatra. so did Caesar he, Caesar fell for Cleopatra oh yeah it was wasn't it yeah yeah, yeah. Cleopatra was a skis bag as well um, she been through some fucking Romans but the, here's the thing is like uh, so he. It, it, although it is kind of a good plan because if he takes Egypt they can block the Suez Canal yeah 
with a big Is that major? Bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big that was mad, wasn't it? It was, isn't it? Just everyone blamed it on that. The deliveries being They're building anyway. a new canal as well, I heard. Are they? Yeah. A lot of... Actually, if you want to put on some tinfoil hat re- real quick, a lot of people think some of the reasons it's kicked off even more again in Gaza is because the uh, current building of a new canal. I, I think the Panama was Canal was being built at this time. Oh, was it? I don't know about the Suez Canal, though. No, Suez Canal is already up and running, Rob. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, That's but why I mean, he wants to take Egypt. Yeah, but I don't know if it was. It's always been a strategical place, that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Suez Canal was running. There was apparently place. plotting for oil just off the coast. 1859. Oh, shit, so it wasn't. Yeah. But that land bridge is still the best for trade. Yeah. Thing. Well, That's why it's a big trade center. Trade for India, Silk yeah. Road ends there, doesn't it? So, yeah, he wanted to go there anyway to fuck with India. And like we said, a bit of ego. March 1798, Bonaparte was elected a member of the French Academy of Sciences. Why? Because he decides... No, just sciences, <laughs> bruv. He decides that his Egypt expedition is going to be a big science trip too, motherfuckers. Let's go. So he gets some artists. He gets some scientists together. Um, it's a group of actually 167 scientists with mathematicians, naturalists, chemists, and geodesists. Geodesists? Geodude? Geologists? No. Rock people? Ge- or geographers? It says geodesists. 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 They're like geodes. Geodudes. Yeah, that's like crystals and that, I think. No, geodudes, like Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. He's got with some crystals Pokemon. inside. Um, so he brings some Pokemon with him and some scientists to Egypt. On May 19th, he departs for Egypt on the Egyptian campaign. He doesn't actually tell the troops or the boys where they're going, bro. You know that? What, when they went to Egypt? When they went to Egypt. He didn't even he's tell just, them. He's just he's like, like, get on the boat. He's like a fucking <laughs> sag dude. Yeah. He's yeah. such a boy. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, get on the boat, lads. Remember them stories I was telling you about Alex and Caesar? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not, it's not important. It's not important. Just get on the boat, lads. No, they were sacks on their head like, come on. <laughs> Napoleon, bro, tell me. <laughs> um... Yeah, so in July, <coughs> en route to Egypt, June 9th, 1798, Bonaparte reached Malta. And at this point, yeah, the lads started. Malta, didn't they? Yeah, at this point, the lads sort of figured out that they're probably heading towards that way. And uh, yeah, at the, at the time, Malta was controlled by the Knights Hospitaller. Um, and yeah, I was about to say, they would all be getting like fucking gas. Like, are we, are we crusading? We <laughs> <laughs> go for Jerusalem, bro, please. <laughs> But they they were like proper fucking Knights Templared up. Grandmaster Ferdinand von Hompesch Zubolheim surrendered after token resistance, and Bonaparte captured an important naval base with the loss of only three men. Wow. He took the entirety of Malta and only lost three geezers, bro. So he was having like naval sieges as well. Did you yeah. fight him off a boat? No, he wasn't much of a naval geezer. Yeah, I know, but I mean, like, he must did he there. just take Malta on a boat? I don't know. I think they landed. Because fair, he's got some fucking. They, I think he probably landed there. Yeah. July 1st, Napoleon fo- um, forces a land in Alexandria. The boy's definitely got an idea that they're going to Egypt Yeah, now. boy. <laughs> That's his pyramids, boy. That's what this town needs. Fucking library. <laughs> <laughs> July 13th, he fights against the Mamelukes. Mamaluke. Yeah, the Battle Big of... Big Great Dane, freaking at... out. <laughs> at the Battle of Shubrakit. Um, the Mamelukes are actually covers, bro. Egypt's ruling military caste at the moment. Um, oh yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, so Tribal, I don't, So, uh, do you know much about the Mamluks and how no, they got no. hold of Egypt? It's pretty it's cool. Like the idea of like tribal so, ruling. So, at one point, I don't know what Egypt had. I think it was the Sultan. The Sultan bought these Mamluks in from I can't remember what region they're from, right? But he got hundreds and thousands of adopt of foster children from this one fucking mountains region, and he raised the Mamluks up from children to be his personal bodyguards. To be these this gangster fucking army that just look after him as the soldier. But that's like doing it with Dagestan now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like exactly that. Med officers just going to get boys. a bunch of fuck, fucking Khabibs and being like, "Yo, you guys are my personal bodyguards, yeah. foster and raise them like your children." Raise, they they had killed him and took over the government. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> that's why you don't adopt a pit bull. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's who the Mamluks are at this yeah. point when Napoleon turns up. So they're pretty gangster usurpers. Yeah. But they also know karate. <laughs> the deep karate, bro. Uh, yeah, so the thing is, though, this helped the French practice their defence tactic for, drum roll, da, la, 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 July 21st, the Battle of the Pyramids, bro. The Battle of the Pyramids, baby! Which is a pretty gangster name. 
Or did he wait by the pyramids? No, like, come fight us. It's a good place for a battle. No, no, no. Can you come here? You come, so, look what? at this fucking backdrop for Ridley Scott. <laughs> you come here. So, mentioning that, I was going to get exactly onto that, right? The pyramids were actually like 15 miles away, bro. Uh, so, they barely would have been seen in the distance, yeah. right? So, that scene we see in the Ridley Scott trailer, a little bit of a fucking artistic take whatever it's cool it makes for a good movie but that was also kind of napoleon's idea as well he could have called it the battle of Baya because that's sort of like the area or baja i think that was the area it was near happening it also happened in a melon grove oh. so he could have called it the battle of the melon grove yeah, but he wanted the pyramids but exactly yeah. what else are you going to call it yeah. the battle of the pyramids bro so he named it himself the battle of the pyramids um he de- again, he defeats the Mamluks. Bonaparte's forces of two- 25,000 are roughly equaled by those of Mamluk Egyptians' cavalry. 29 French and approximately 2,000 Egyptians were killed. So only 29 French geezers died. That's fucking good. good. <laughs> Isn't it's it, for a fucking ground battle. Yeah. And they're cavalry. And we're talking just a bunch yeah. of geezers with rifles. Oh, but he does, he does love a fucking big gun, though, doesn't he? He does like a cannon, bro. He is an artillery geezer. Um... The victory boosted the French morale, mm. obviously. August 1st, one of our boys turns up, lads. August 1st, British Admiral Horatio Nelson. Oh, who's that guy? He turns up at the Battle of the Nile, bro. He turns up and he finds all of Napoleon's ships just hanging out in Egypt. He went there looking for them, admittedly. But he finds all of Napoleon's ships hanging out in um, Egypt. And he sco- scoots up around, flanks them, goes in front of them and goes behind them because they're all anchored facing out just in case Horatio's army does turn up. He easily moves around them. So he's literally surrounding them. Um, and he just fucking totals Napoleon's ships. Yeah, yeah. he's a fucking captain. Just Kirk fucking trashes sea. Napoleon's ships. He he ends up when he turns up. He could could have waited four extra hours until after sunset for his old fleet to catch up yeah. with him. But instead just of being like that, he was like, "Nah, fuck that. I'm just gonna do it now." So he just went straight in and started attacking. So then the next three hours or four hours, as the battle's already started, more, more chavvies are just, just turning, turning up, <laughs> um, and he just, he ends up wiping Napoleon's fleet completely off, like fucks it completely. It's gone. So um, and rather loss. than and rather that's than, only one navy in the sea, boy. That's it. And rather than being like, right, I'm then gonna go on land and fuck with Napoleon. Yeah. Do you know remember what I said earlier? Napoleon weren't much of a naval guy. Yeah. Mm. Horatio weren't much of a fucking land geezer. Yeah, yeah. So, so he knew he, his strengths. That's it. Stayed where yeah, he was. He lost one arm at this point. As well. I'm not sure. He lost his arm. But he went so, um, so after he doing that to Napoleon's ships. He just went, all right, lads, peace out. See you later. And he just sailed away. That's just right. left Napoleon stranded in Egypt. Genius. It's fucking good, isn't it? Hope you like hummus, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> October 1st, uh, Nelson, uh, uh, sorry, Nelson, um, Napoleon occupies Cairo. Um, December 24th of the same year, of uh, what year is this? Of 1798, he claims that he announces this discovery of the Rosetta Stone. Wow. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Napoleon, the Napoleon dog. and the science group, they found the Rosetta Stone. Fuck. Here's the thing: is like when he got to Cairo and after Horatio destroyed his ship, he'd done two things: he could sit around and sulk, or he could start living a vida loca, bro. Yeah, true. And um, oh no, you've left this in the most lootable dungeon. We're <laughs> <laughs> gonna have the coolest shit. Oh dear. <laughs> he starts doing exactly that. The science boys are wiling out. They start discovering the Valley of King of all sorts. They actually at points run out of pencils. <laughs> so they have to use lead bullets from the army to make pencils. That's genius. Um, he's that is li- cool as fuck, isn't it? He's living it up in Egypt, bruv. He's banging his lieutenant's wives, like everything, bruv. Are they Her- watching? <laughs> I don't know. Join he's got them. harems. It's called bullying. They went and took the, like the Mamluks' po- palaces and fort, uh, forts that they had, uh, and nice. all the French were living in their palaces. And sometimes they found they would run across some fellas of harems, some like old Mamluks' harems, and they stuck around and they got to keep them. Sick. Um, that would have blown their mind as well. <laughs> yeah. Them smelly French orgies, and they got one of these fucking like lotted up Game of Thrones orgies. That's it. Proper desert bitches. He tells the Muslim. Tents. He tells the Muslim lads and everything. Yeah, I'm down with Muhammad. I think the geezers were well, alright. In fact, me and all the boys were thinking of converting. <laughs> of course, he didn't go to Jerusalem, the dirty fucking bitch. Um, 
the problem is um, he's lying. he's lying for his fucking team. Yeah. <laughs> yes, come on. Um, he loves wine and he doesn't oh, want to yeah. get his dick chopped. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah. Imagine a fucking circumcision back then. Yeah, exactly, bro. No anesthesia, nothing, bro. Um, obviously, with all of that, they the popular sort of figured that he wasn't really down with Muhammad. Yeah. Um, and that caused a few rebellions. A few rebellions happened while he was they in charge it, of Cairo, Cairo. He fucks him up though, like fucks him up pretty bad. He ca- cannons a couple of mosques. <laughs> yeah, come um, on, <laughs> <laughs> moving naughty. Um, <laughs> he rides his horse inside the Grand Mosque of Cairo to shut down. Uh, now I don't know if you know about mosques, bro, but you're not even allowed to wear your shoes in them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and he stood there making eye contact while he awkwardly waited for his horse to shit. He <laughs> rode his the horse. The tail was up. It was just like. He rode his horse into the mosque to shut down one of the rebellions. That's how he rolls. He should have rode a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Early 1799, he moved an army uh, an army into the Ottoman province of Damascus, Syria and Galilee. Um, De Bonaparte led these 13,000 French soldiers in the conquest of the coastal towns of Arish, Gaza, Jaffa and Haifa. So uh, he did go to Israel, bro. Yeah, is this all, I was going to say, what is this country at the minute? Egypt. Israel. Yes, yeah, so it's straight across from Egypt, basically. Gaza, 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 Gaza Jaffa. What was it back then? Um, back then, it was just part of the Ottoman Empire. It was Western right. Syria or Southern Syria. Okay. It was part of Syria. Um, Irish, Gaza, Jaffa. Yeah, back then it would have been Syria. The attack on Jaffa was particularly brutal. Brutal. Bonaparte discovered that many of the defenders were former prisoners of war, um, ostensibly on parole. So he ordered the garrison and some 2,000 prisoners to be executed on a beach. So he got 2,000 of these prisoners, put them all on the beach, sent the firing squad on there. Then he realised when he set the firing squad on, on these prisoners, hold up. We're going to attract sharks. We're running out of bullets, lads. Can you just stab them? <laughs> oh. Can you just stab them? Fix instead? bayonets. Fix bayonets and just stab them. It took him three days to kill the 2,000 prisoners on this beach. Yeah. They're wiggling. <laughs> and then, yeah, there was parts they ended up like just going out to the rocks and finding stragglers and being like, fucking... <laughs> banging them up and shit. That's pretty brutal. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Um, Napoleon this is was Dracula a, era. This is his Dracula era. He started going like full despot when he was in the Middle East because yeah. there was no Euro- you have to. European countries weren't there <laughs> keeping an eye on him. So yeah. he was like, oh, I'm gonna have to set a bit of an example here. Um, yeah, here's the thing with that as well: men, women, and children were robbed and murdered for three days on that beachhead with the prisoners. He wilded out. Uh, Bonaparte began with an army of thirteen. 13- this is Jaffa. This is Jaffa. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Bonaparte began with an army of 13,000 men. uh, 1,500 were reported missing. 1,200 died in combat. And thousands perished from disease, mostly bubonic plague. Uh Uh-oh. The plague popped about. Not fucking... Oh, that's one thing I I forgot to mention about um, before the Battle of the Pyramids. So in between that first battle of the Mamluks and the Battle of the Pyramids... He marched his dudes in woolen jackets across the fucking desert to the pyramids. He weren't allowed no uniform change. No, no uniform change. Like, geezers were stripping in the middle of the desert. Yeah. He, um, geezers committed suicide on the march through the desert. Fucking hell, yeah. Because of the mirages were fucking him were so bad. He didn't bring enough water. Oh, he's not as organised as you thought, then. No, because he didn't think about the desert too much. Um, well, did it, was he not fucked over by getting all the ships? No, that because it was well. before that. He never thinks oh. of weather, actually. Yeah. It's um, the one thing he's like lacking. Uh, he put all his points in charisma and like, <laughs> tactics. <laughs> but and then when they reached the Battle of the Pyramids, yeah, where did I say, what was the one of the names you could have had it? Battle melon the, melon, melon Grove. Yeah, so it's a watermelon. So everyone's just eating melons. So they turned up and they started gorging on watermelons. <laughs> and they, all, shit, and like they all just gave themselves fucking dysentery before the Battle of the Pyramids oh, and shit like fuck. that. Yeah, bro. So it was, it now they know how the Argent Court boys feel. <laughs> Yeah, exactly the same fucking feeling, right? So, now Bubonic plague's fucking with his army. May 1799, he failed to reduce the fortress at Acre, so he marched his army back to Egypt. To speed the retreat, Bonaparte ordered plague-stricken men to be poisoned with opium. That's a fucking stop good it. way to kill stop your mate, Stop it spreading. Stop, not stop it, just so he could get away. He was like, I'm not carrying these fucking plaguey boys, just give them opium and let's fuck off. But like, at least it's not like, just leave them in this town, we'll come back for you, like, lie to them and they will die slowly. Yeah. They he... got like a really fucking relaxing death. <laughs> yeah, fair, all right, fair, fair. I think opium was only isolated, not opium, um, morphine was isolated 
not soon, soon after, after this. this like yeah. 1800s. It was in the 1800s, yeah. It's sort of a tactic we still use today, though, isn't it? Like, when COVID came back, it was like, just kill all the old people off. Yeah, I guess it's quite similar, isn't it? It <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't seem as epic as the Can't be asked to carry them through. Yes, yeah, well, the thing yeah. is, when you're killing old people, not plague victims out in Egypt during a battle, it just doesn't seem as heroic. No. But the thing is, with these countries, we've all got an aging population, and we, like, all the criminals oh, have been shit. stealing the pension pot. Yes, so true. they don't want, they can't pay out on the pensions, otherwise they'll have to sell some of their fucking multi conglomerate company. Yeah, this is very true. They fucked our pension pots. So they need to kill the old people before they can claim. Yeah, because they're taking all their pension money, so we now don't yeah. have any money to battle the pensions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fuckers. <laughs> they ain't even got enough for a fucking dust up with France. They ain't even got enough to give me some opium. Because it's going that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the number who died remains disputed, ranging from thirty to five hundred and eighty of his own men. Um, he also paid out a thousand wounded men. So that's good of him. That's not bad, yeah. Paid them out. Purple then heart left him in the desert. Yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> left him in the desert, right? Twenty fifth of July, seventeen ninety nine, back in Egypt, Bonaparte defeated an Ottoman amphibious invasion. A- Abakir. They all dressed up as frogs. They all dressed up as frogs. Yeah. He fucking. I'm imagining like the, the footstool from Beauty and the Beast climbing up. <laughs> out <of> the, <laughs> like D Day. <laughs> <laughs> amphibious Ottomans. <laughs> August 24th, 1799. He leaves Egypt and returns to France, leaving his army behind. Yeah, fuck it. I've got a ganky old Josephine to go back to. Well, here, here's the reason. While in Egypt, Bonaparte stayed informed of European affairs. He learned that France had suffered a serious defeat in the War of the Second Coalition. Fearing that the Republic's future was in doubt, he took advantage of the temporary departure of British ships from French coastal ports and set sail for France. Despite the fact that he had received no explicit orders from Paris, the army was left in the tr- uh, charge of Jean- Jean-Baptiste K- Kleber. Nice. So yeah, he just decided to fuck this now. I'm, done. I'm bored. Yeah. <laughs> Egypt's yeah. boring, bruv. I'm, I'm going back to France. Shit's kicking off. Completed it, mate. Completed it. Got it all. How much of his army's dead at this point as well? Not all of them. He's still got a fair, fair few over it's there. It's mad, so he lost. But is it like 50, 40%? Um, I don't know. He's lost quite a bit. So like maybe he's like... I need to go raise a new army. Maybe. Yeah, Fuck yeah, these yeah. Guys. Needs a few extra. <laughs> these guys. He's just turned off his save game and he's going to start a new <laughs> game. He's like, these ones I've got left are shit. <laughs> um, October, he reaches, by October, he reaches Paris. Despite the failures in Egypt, so this is 1799, despite his failures in Egypt, Bonaparte is returned to a hero's welcome. Nice. He, At least you went there, bruv. Yeah. I've got t- some of them fucking dead guys you sent back. <laughs> Bring me back a Fancy magnet, a boy. slice. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the Victorians were eating mummies. The Victorians were eating mummies and shit. He then drew together an alliance with director Emmanuel Joseph Siez, his brother Lucien, Speaker of the Council of 500, Roger Duc- Ducos, Director Joseph Fouché and Talleyrand, and they overthrew the directory by a coup d'etat. So we, we come to our day in history, yesterday from today's recording, November 9th, and it happened a little bit today on the 10th, November 9th to 10th, the coup of 18 Brumaire, Napoleon overthrows the French government and becomes first consul of France. He retains power through a bunch of massively rigged elections, stuff in bare ballot boxes, bro. Yeah, boy, he's, he's Joe Biden. Biden. He's <laughs> Biden in it up. Oh, man, George W. did that too. Uh, the constitution he establishes preserved the appearance of a republic, but in reality, it created a dictatorship. They're the best kind. <laughs> this is like if fucking George Washington didn't turn it down. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're fucking great and revolutionary. Do you want yeah. to be king? Oh, I shouldn't. I really should. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Everyone drop and give me 20. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to carry the votes? <laughs> Who's going to carry the votes? <laughs> <laughs> Big sex of votes, like <laughs> Reich Dag Marx, bro. <laughs> Carrying votes, boats, and all my fucking cannons, bro. <laughs> should we call that for part one, bro? I think we should call That's that regular for part episode. one length as well. That is, but yeah, that that would be part one of Napoleon's Bonaparte. That's pretty much his rise to power as the well. The first part of the boner, bro. <laughs> 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 We've gone based halfway up the shaft. It's in some good veins there, <laughs> but it's all gonna matter on what he does with the helmet. <laughs> Is it purple? Is it a bit off? Is it shiny from Josephine? Find out next week.